Hey everyone, welcome back to another uh, tutorial for Metasound in Unreal Engine 5. Today we're going to be looking at a technique for creating moving generative soundscapes, but it's really a technique that can be used all over the place. So there's a few things here. The first thing that we're going to talk about is this, um, this timeline node that we can use to create automation by sending it to a Metasound, as, as I've shown in some previous uh, tutorials. Uh, but the major, the, the real technique here is that what we're going to do is to create this sort of loop of automation. And it's not the same length as the sample. So as we get this looped animation, it will keep looping. And every time that the sample is looping, because they're not in time, it will give the impression of something that's constantly changing, even though it's really just using the loop of the sound and then some additional loop for automation. So the design is like this. Uh, we're going to take two um, wave players. One of them is going to be pitched up seven semitones, so a fifth. And we're basically just going to fade between the two of them. So let's start that from scratch. I'll delete all of this and let's just do it from the beginning. Uh, what I've done to, to start with, though, is I've got this audio loop here. And the idea is that the, the, the loop, so it's about 40 seconds, um, I've just duplicated it and reversed it so that when we cross the boundary of the loops, it will be rather seamless. So let's just listen to that. So now it's playing in reverse after there, and when we come back around in the loop, it's also seamless. So that looping on its own should sound seamless, but it will obviously sound pretty loopy quite quickly. So I'm just going to get rid of these guys here. Let's delete them. Yep, we can just get rid of them. And I'll just keep my ambient loop here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just create the meta sound. So MS uh, ambient uh, soundscape. And I am going to create two wave players in stereo. And uh, let's get that wave asset as an input, something that I can easily reference. And the reason that I'm going to do that, we'll see in a second, instead of just selecting the wave asset here, but basically we have, we're playing both of these, these wave assets together. But the first thing that I don't want to have happen is have them play in synchronicity because that will still have sort of a loopy thing going on. So I'm trying to de decorrelate those two loops. So let's use this to create a, a, a um, sorry, get the, uh, the duration of the loop. And from the duration, I'm going to randomly select a start time. So using a random value, so sometime between zero and the maximum length of this wave asset, I'd like to start the, the loop at some, some random moment. So that will already have these two uh, wave assets playing uh, separately, not at the same points in time. Let's just loop these really quick. And to make sure that on, the, on play that we get a random value. And let's start that wave player once that, that value is being triggered. And over here, we'll just start the the wave player right away when the meta sound starts. All right, and then there's a few things to take care of here. I don't really want this extra on, uh, unfinished one shot, so I'll just remove that interface here. And I'll also turn this into a stereo meta sound using the settings up here. Go to the output, output format, and let's create stereo. And finally, um, I'll use the crossfade module to crossfade between the two uh, the to wave assets. So let's put the left from the here and the left from here so we can crossfade the left channels. And then we'll also want to crossfade the what the right channels. And I always just put a limiter at the end just in case here to protect ourselves in case any overloads happen, which they shouldn't, but you never know. Okay. So that's all great. And then finally, just to control this crossfade value, uh, let's, let's promote that to an input. So this is something that we're going to be able to automate from the blueprint. So I'll just use that, that, that volume here. So let's test that out. We should get two wave assets, one of them playing. Oh, I'm just going to add a, some pitch shifting here. One of them is going to be playing semi, seven semitones above, and the other playing semi, seven, sorry, at, at the root position at zero semitones. And we're going to fade between them, and they'll be playing at different points in time in the sample. So let's try that out. So already using the same wave asset, we have two different um, 
sort of parts happening. So that's cool, let's save that. And now let's create a blueprint, new blueprint class, an actor, call this MS uh, ambient, um, or sorry, blueprint, ambient soundscape. Soundscape. And I'll add the meta sound as a audio component as usual. Whoops, not a Niagara. Just add a audio, MS, ambient soundscape. And let's go find it over here. Where was that? Source. So I've just selected the sound here. That's great. Just make sure that we have no audio or no uh, spatialization happening. That's all wonderful. Now we can easily reference this audio component inside the event graph. So like I said before, it's this timeline node that we're after to create the automation between the for the crossfade. So let's call that crossfade. And there's a few things I want to set right away. The first thing is that uh, I'll make it autoplay and loop. And why not? We'll use this. Use last keyframe. So the length I'll make about, say, 32 seconds, and I'll add a float track. This track I'm going to call the crossfade, which is the value that we'll be crossfading between. And just because it's a bit hard to see, I'm actually going to choose values between 1 and or 0 and 10 and scale it after. I mean, really, we're going to be using 0 to 1, but I'm going to use um, 0 and 10 just to uh, make it a bit easier to see here. So to start things off, I've, I press shift to and then clicked to create these nodes. I'm going to create some bounds here. Let's make this at zero time at zero value and this one being at 32 seconds at zero value. Uh, so now I can stretch a few of these, these guys around. Maybe I want more of the, uh, the fade happening at the beginning. Let's make this around 10 and then sort of fades out. And then we have a little surge again, maybe. And then we come back down and almost entirely the other sample. So that's just one way we could do some automation. Um, I'm going to select the auto for the interpolation here so that we get these smooth curves. And it just sounds a little bit more natural. So I'm just doing this sort of quickly. As you can see, you can really spend more time to, to make this perfect. But this is just a demonstration, so let's just keep going. So now that I've got this crossfade, the next thing is, is that I need to be able to send this to the meta sound. So if you remember from our last tutorials, we can use the audio component to use this set float parameter to send it to an audio component. So this one here says target is audio component. And the name is the input. What did I call the input again? Let's double check. I always want to double check because sometimes I get it wrong. We called this uh, volume. Okay, that's great. So the in name should just be volume, the very same. And the input is going to be this crossfade value. And I'd also like to see what we're getting while this is, uh, this is happening. Whoops, not the duration. I'd like to, that to be the, the string. So let's trigger the string output on the screen whenever the update is happening. And finally, while, while the timeline updates the value, we want to also update this set flow parameter. So that's pretty good. Um, that should do it. So we, we, we should be able to play this back now and we're going to get some, um, some numbers here for the volume and here a, a, a fade between the ambient loop. So let's give that a shot. Oh, forgot. Let's first we need to put the blueprint into the world, of course. Just make sure it's saved here. Let's try that again. Whoa, and I've still got it with that 0 to 10 volume. Um, remember I set it here up to up to 10 almost. So I just want to make sure that that stays within our bounds here. Let's use a map clamped uh, node. And what we can do here is that we can really quickly change the range. So we were saying it's from 0 to 10, but we only want it to go from 0 to 1. And finally, I'll use that value to uh, change our volume. It should be a little bit more comfortable. So let's try that out again. So you can see the fade happening. Okay, we're now at the pitched up meta sound and coming back down. Getting back into it and back down to the, the first one. You can see here, here that pitch change between the two of them. This is sort of creating a tension and release between two different samples. We go up to the fifth 
and back down, or we could also have gone down to the fifth and back up. So I would say those crossfades are happening pretty fast. I'd probably slow those way down, but just for demonstration pur purposes, let's roll with that. It's basically a constantly changing soundscape using a relatively small amount of material. And if we were to make those fades a bit slower, I don't think this would be so intense. That should pretty much do it. I mean, this technique, we can explore this and you can really work this artistically. There's a lot of work to be done, of course. Um, but the idea is simple. It's using these timelines uh, to be able to create automation. And then this idea of uh, fading between two samples, uh, two versions of the same sample, uh, can allow us, it's a technique that I've used uh, in the past, it's usually more on slow moving samples to really feel like we're moving, you know, from one part of the music to the, the fifth, creating that tension and then sort of uh, resolution and just going back and forth between those two. So I hope that helps out uh, with your approaches toward generative music in Metasound. Um, one of the approaches I've gone for here, you've noticed, I'm using wave players. We're not doing all this synthesis from scratch, and this is a very conscious choice. Um, I think there's a lot to be said for um, making sure that we pre-prepare our, our, our audio and we know exactly what it's going to sound like. Um, but hopefully this can get you started you know, with some, some other uh, generative techniques to, to take the, uh, some small amounts of audio and create things that are maybe a bit more interesting without causing a lot more DSP happening inside Unreal Engine. So that's it for now, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.